Okay, welcome back to physics. I wanted to walk you through the first of a handful of derivations we're using Gauss's law, and uh, we're going to try to find the um, uh, the electrical field from an infinite or a long line of charges. So uh, the con a couple concepts are going to keep showing up, and uh, it's a handy way to get through. So we're going to have just really a few geometric shapes we're worried about. So let's think about this. I'm going to have some line of charge. Oh, let's make it positive. Why not? And the idea behind Gauss's law is that we're going to be capturing all of the flux, and we're going to have two ways of describing that flux, and we set those equal to each other, and then uh, then the magic happens for you. So remember flux. So this is essentially the number of lines that are coming off of an electrical charge, right? So if I have a line of charge, I'm going to have all these flux, all this flux coming off of it, which is a way of thinking about a, a field. And um, what I want to do is I'm interested in saying, well, you know, what is the what is the electrical field at this point? And I'm going to say this at this is at some point. I'll make this R away from the line. Well, uh, yeah, what a hassle, right? So uh, it, it, we we need some way that we can account for all of these charges because this piece here, right, it's going to be affected by all these other ones. And oh, good grief. So I can't KQ over R my way there in any reasonable way. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to use Gauss's law. And Gauss's law, first thing I want to do is I want to think of what's a corresponding shape that I'm going to use for this. So one, come up with a shape. So for this, I can come up with a shape, which is going to be a, uh, a cylinder. Right? So I'm going to draw a cylinder like this. And my cylinder is going to have a radius of lowercase r. And the advantage of this, and the reason I'm trying to draw the shape, is on this shape, I want the electrical field to be same, the same everywhere, right? So if I look here, my electrical field is going to be the same. If I look here, my electrical field is going to be the same. And this is the thing that's really important, that no matter where I am on this shape, my electrical field, the magnitude of my electrical field is going to be the same in the, in the direction as well. Okay, so I want to choose the shape intelligently such that my electrical field becomes constant for any r, right? so for any distance that I am. Right? So, uh, so I can do this for, uh, for a line that I'm going to use a, a tube to make that shape. Um, so you may recall the, uh, the equation that we want to use. So we have two ways to describe flux. One is that it's equal to the area times the electrical field. This is the dot product. So it, uh, this is, if I have a little surface area here, that's going to be have a vector direction. And uh, that vector direction is lined up with my electrical field lines, so it's in the same direction. So dot price. Well, so my electrical field times the magnitude of my electrical field times the area it passes through. Right, so I want to capture all of the flux coming from this, and so I can say my total flux is going to be this. And the way we write this, we calculus calculate all of that. Right, is going to be the closed surface integral of E dA. So I'm going to add up all these areas all the way across this surface, right? All the way across this surface of my Gaussian Gaussian um, surface. That's a closed surface integral, so I add that all up. And notice that I'm going to do this for, for long or infinitely long lines of charges because I don't worry about the, the I don't want to worry about the flux coming out the end, right? So technically at the ends I have these things, you know, I have electric field lines or flux going out in awkward directions. And if I make this sufficiently long, that becomes sufficiently small that I can ignore it. Right? There are other ways to get there, but we're going to try to do it. We're going to do simple ways. The other one, and Gauss's law says, well, flux is equal to the enclosed charge divided by the uh, constant epsilon naught. So I'm going to set these, these two equal to each other. So I have one challenge. I need to figure out the area. So these are the two things I have to worry about. So E is going to be a constant, which I'm interested in finding. Epsilon naught is a constant, so I don't have to worry about that one. So the two things I always have to sort out. So I have to sort out, well, what's my surface area of my Gaussian, of my Gaussian surface? And second of all, what's my enclosed charge? Yeah, so uh, let's, do, let's do charge first. <laughs> um, Charge, and this is where we're going to use density to get ourselves out of headaches, right? So I don't know what my enclosed charge is, so I'm going to put it in terms of linear density. So if I have something that's really long, uh, yeah, I don't know. So let's see. So I'm going to have my linear charge density is going to be my total charge divided by my total length, whatever that is. Right? And the nice thing about that is that that doesn't change, right? So that... Uh, 
for, for this, however long my cylinder is, right, I can know that the amount of charge that's enclosed is going to be that density times whatever length that is. Right? So I'm going to pick some arbitrary length of my cylinder, and it'll work out. Um, this gets trickier, so charge gets trickier when I get inside of objects, and uh, we'll go into those, uh, those examples next. Says, the second thing that I have to worry about is uh, my Gaussian surface area. So always my, my integration is always going to be simple in these, right? I want to add up, so what's all the area over the total uh, surface area of this cylinder? Right? So I'm going to look up the, the formula for surface area of a cylinder, which is going to be the, the circumference times the length. So my area is going to be the circumference, which is 2 pi r times the length, which I've decided is going to be L arbitrarily. And now I have uh, had enough to do a little bit of math, right? So now I'm going to go back to my flux equation. I'm going to set these two equal to each other. So if I add up all that flux coming from my electrical field times the area, that's going to equal the amount of flux that's captured from the Q enclosed over epsilon naught. So there's two ways of describing flux. And now I'm going to plug in these things to make sense out of it. So E is a constant. I'm going to pull that out. My closed surface integral of my area right, is my total area. So the integration on this uh, for Gauss's law is usually not a challenge because I've got, uh, I'm, I'm covering my entire two-dimensional surface, right? So here I'm working about my two-dimensional Gaussian surface. My Q enclosed is going to be lambda over times L over my constant epsilon naught. And remember what I'm trying to get to. I'm trying to get to my electrical field, so uh, I have L is going to cancel, and I'll be left with my uh, E is going to be equal to, uh, we got lambda over 2 pi r epsilon naught. So if I was to plot this, I would say, well, as I get further away, that I'm going to drop off uh, with the inverse of the distance, right? So I'm going to have an inverse shape. So as I get further away, my electrical field drops. It drops as the inverse. So this is the formula for electrical field of a, uh, uh, a line of charge. We'll get more complex next. Bye.